Hello everybody and welcome back again to another episode of Dragon Age Inquisition in which we will spend even more time talking to our companions because I still need to catch up with some of them. Um, so yeah, but it seems like you people enjoy these talky episodes. So sure, let's let's have another one of those. But first of all, we are going to check on the War Council as usual and see what our advisors have done in the meantime. All right. Oh uh, yeah, this, this was a weird Red Jenny one. It appears our detracting lord found shame in the dark thanks to a scandalous love. <laughs> also, blind fats are now the rage. Can Red Jenny claim that? Orle remains Orle. <laughs> All right, so we got some gold out of that. So I guess it worked out fine. <laughs> um, Scout Haven ruins. Inquisitor, while most of Haven has been destroyed, the charges recovered some lost gear still intact, along with enemy corpses that might yield information about what we are up against. More importantly, the assistance of Ferelden forces enabled the charges to rescue refugees who had not yet heard what had who had not yet heard what happened at Haven. My troops brought them in safely. In addition to the farmers you'd expect, there are several skilled craftsmen and even some soldiers. After seeing the devastation wrought at Haven, they are eager to help the Inquisition. Lieutenant Crimisius Aklasi. Alright, alright, and I got a new operation. A patrol for the crew. The Sutherland lad and his small crew have reported in. Only minor trouble as expected. Nevertheless, they have increased our presence. They seem useful freelancers. Alright. Okay, um, yeah, there is a bunch of stuff that we can do. Are you alright, Leliana? Are you? I suppose not. Haven was trying. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see what this is about. Diverting soldiers in the frost bags. A letter delivered by messenger bird. My name is Sister Paulette. My sisters and I have been accompanying, accompanying a handful of injured Inquisition soldiers through the frost bags. As they are no longer able to fight for the Inquisition, they wish to return to their families and Ferelden. These are strange times, and many seek the solace or forgiveness of loved ones. Unfortunately, that peace may never come. A band of Ava, refusing to see reason, have pinned us down. We have taken refuge in a cave and are holding them off as best as we can, but I do not know how long we can last. I understand this bird is trained to return to Skyhold. I pray it is so. We need aid. A note in Cullen's hand follows. Soldiers dispatched from Skyhold itself will not reach them in time. We should have men near their location. We send a party to pursue a group of Red Templars we suspect of moving captured civilians to one of their Illyrium mines. A swift bird might reach the party, allowing them to go to the sisters' aid. However, we would likely lose a Templar's trail. Ooh. These soldiers are still our allies. They've done their part. We cannot abandon them. No one wants to make this call, but if the Red Templars to escape, were to escape, I guess, more people will be harmed. Our soldiers would understand. Ooh, this this is a tough one. This is a tough one. I mean, as I've been saying earlier, orders like these should not be given lightly. You know, sending your man into death because our soldiers are not disposable. So, you should have a very good reason if you give such orders. And I mean, this may just qualify for a good reason. I mean, if these Templars have uh, civilians with them, then I feel we should help the civilians and not our own soldiers. Ah, uh, yeah, this is difficult. I it's, it's a bit hard to work on that limited information. Like, I mean, how many, how many people are we talking about here? How many, are we sure they have civilians captured and stuff like that? But based on the information that I have, I would say we should pursue the Red Templars and make sure that they don't kill more innocent people. And that our soldiers, w yeah, are on their own. Hmm. Yeah. I think, I think we should try to free those civilians and 
I'm afraid we can't do anything for for the soldiers then. All right. <sighs> Let's do this. Let's do this. Um. So what is this about? Deploy Reese and Evangeline. Inquisitor, we have recovered from our wounds and are ready to serve the Inquisition as you see fit. Evangeline has friends among the Elysian nobility who may listen to our cause, and I am familiar with several cash and used by the rebel mages. <coughs> or, if you prefer, we would be honored to join the Inquisition troops near Valfama and fight the forces of Corypheus as best we can. Use in service, reason Evangeline. A passionate warrior coming from a good family might bring the Inquisition, Inquisition a great deal of gold. The cash re speaks of might yield something of value. An experienced Templar and a powerful mage would greatly increase our military strength in here, Valfarma. Hmm. I don't know, I may take Cullen's advice on that. But let's see what else we can do. Um, escape routes for agents in Crestwood. Inquisitor, I would have moved some of my agents into Care Bronach, the fortress in Cre I have moved some of my agents into Care Bronach, the fortress in Crestwood. At the moment, the villagers prefer us to the bandits, and it is an excellent waypoint from Ferelden to Orle. We can make it a rendezvous point for our messengers carrying sensitive information from either country. You're familiar with the caves underneath Crestwood, they run for miles and if we excavate some passages, our agents could easily enter and exit the keep without being seen. Alright, it's only for Liliana, so opening these secret tunnels will let us evade any prying eyes that turn towards Kerr Bronach. Alright. Let's see what we have. You can do that. And let's see if we can't find something for Josephine. Yeah, I think this one, I mean, it's just in this amount, so I assume it doesn't really matter who I take, and Josephine is the fastest, so Let she us can begin. do this. And everyone's busy. So, let's go back. Alright, so, who needs still t uh, a good talking to? <laughs> Have we spoken to Josephine? We need to speak to Vivienne and Varric and Dorian and Liliana and I guess uh, Cassandra. Yeah, uh, still a lot of still a lot of people to go. So I hope we can we can handle it in this episode. Okay, uh, I guess we can start with Varric. He's over here. She's calmed down. Oh, is she talking about Cassandra and their little fight? <laughs> so, are you all right? That got a little heated. Are you all right? <laughs> well, doing? that depends. How angry is Cassandra? I wasn't trying to keep secrets. <laughs> I told the Inquisition everything that seemed important at the time. Hawkshaft Shandura, you knew about Corypheus, talk to Cassandra. Well... I mean, as soon as we knew uh, Corypheus was our enemy, he came forward with that. So why why should he tell us about that earlier? And I mean, he actually told Cassandra about what happened there, if if you remember Dragon Age two. So so this, this doesn't doesn't really matter. Yeah, maybe you should just talk to Cassandra and and work it out with her. I bet Cassandra regrets how things went back there. You should talk to her. I appreciate that you're trying to keep the peace, but things between me and the Seeker are as good as they'll <laughs> get. I keep hoping none of this is real. Maybe it's all some bullshit from the <laughs> Fade and it'll just disappear. I know I need to do better. I'm sorry. <laughs> some bullshit from the Fade. I wonder if they actually wanted to say, you know, it's just some bad dream and then realize that dwarves don't dream, so they had to <laughs> voice... Uh, had to put it differently. Anyway, do you have... Oh! Corypheus is back. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, what is he? You said he was a darkspawn, or a magister. What is he really? I'm not sure. I don't think Corypheus really knows either. 
He's definitely a darkspawn, but when we found him, it was pretty obvious he hadn't heard mm. that. He thinks he's a magister, a priest of Dumat, in fact. He says he broke into the Golden City, like in the Chantry tale. And you beat him before. If you and Hawk defeated him once, we can do it again. <laughs> it we didn't easy, just though. think Corypheus was dead. He was dead. No pulse, no breath, full of stab wounds. There wasn't a lot of room hmm. for doubt. It makes me wonder. I thought the Wardens imprisoned Corypheus to use him. Maybe they did it because hmm. he can't be killed. Yeah, I figured that would have been the reason too. So, how did you find the prison? How did you and Hawk even wind up in a Grey Warden prison for ancient Darkspawn? Corypheus sent people after Hawk. He actually got control of an entire Carter clan. Made them drink Darkspawn mm. blood. Weird shit. Yeah. Uh, we tracked the Carter to an old dwarven fort or something in the mountains. Of course, it turned out to be a trap. They needed Hawk's blood to open the locks holding Corypheus. And they drew us into the prison to get it. Well, we'll find a way to kill him again, I guess. There has to be a way to defeat Corypheus. We'll find it. Don't worry. I hope you're right. <laughs> Baker's breath, what have I let loose? <laughs> I think you're confused. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I mean, I know how the things went down in Dragon Age 2 and... Once they were trapped in there, there wasn't really that much they could do, right? You had nothing to do with this, Varric. I was the one who led Hawk to Corypheus. <laughs> if I hadn't tracked the Carter to that ruin. <laughs> but you've got more important things to do than listen to me worry. Just let me know when you want something shot. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, Freya isn't really concerned with that sort of what ifs and if I hadn't. You know, what's done is done and we have to deal with the current situation and that's the more important thing. Also, um, Vivienne is, oh, she may actually be up there, so maybe we can find a way to her. Um, and I think Solus is somewhere over here as well, so, uh, not Solus, Dorian. And we still want to talk to him, right, there he is, let's, let's do this. Anything interesting? A letter regarding Felix, Alexius' son. <laughs> he went to the Magisterium, stood on the Senate floor and told them of you. A glowing testimonial, I'm informed. <laughs> no news on the reaction, but everyone back home is talking. Felix always was as good as his word. Was? He's dead. Ah. Oh. The Blight caught up with him. I see. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry for your loss, then. Are you all right? He was ill, and thus on borrowed time anyhow. That doesn't mean you can't regret his death. I know. Felix used to sneak me treats from the kitchens when I was working late in his father's study. Don't get into trouble on my behalf, I tell him. I like trouble, he'd say. Tevinter <laughs> could use more mages like him. Those who put the good of others above themselves. Were you too involved? That seems kind of inappropriate to ask. It's, it's kind of like that question with Liliana where I could ask about her and the divine. I mean, seriously, what what, what business of mine is that? <laughs> so, um, yeah, what about yourself? You make it sound like he was a better person than you. What a mad thing to say. <laughs> Few people are better than I. <laughs> Very well, a better person, <laughs> clearly, not nearly as handsome. <laughs> right. Thankfully, Felix wasn't the only decent sort kicking around <laughs> Thedas. All right, Dorian. Um, do you have anything else to say? Stop, stop walking away. Stay here, stay still. I'm told you have Alexius researching magic for yeah, you. Yeah, right. Research is always what made him happiest. Perhaps I'll even go talk to him eventually. <laughs> One word of advice. If he suggests altering time as a way to solve all your problems, give it a pass. <laughs> yep, that's pretty good advice. Um, yeah, tell me about Alexius. You said Alexius was a mentor of yours. 
He was my patron, sponsoring me to the higher levels of the Circle of Magi. In return, my successes were his. <laughs> I had a lot of successes, naturally. Alexius was most pleased. He and I used to talk over Brandy about the corruption. <laughs> how we could one day make real change in the Imperium. And then he... gave up. He stopped trying. Why? Why did he give up? On a journey to Hosburg, a Darkspawn raid killed his wife and sickened his son. Right. I remember hearing the news. He hadn't been there, you see. Alexius was convinced he could have protected them. <laughs> and the guilt tore him up. I helped him with his research for a while and then we drifted apart. Yeah, I think we actually read some notes about that incident in, in Redcliffe Castle during that strange dark future mission. So you argued. You mean you fought with him? I told him to snap out of it, move on. <laughs> I thought I had all the answers. Later, I regretted my hasty words. But we didn't speak again until he approached me for the Venatori. Too much pride, I suppose. <laughs> Plus, I was busy drinking. <laughs> One must have priorities. Yeah. Um, but you still followed him. You still went after him. It's true. What was I thinking? It's so cold <laughs> down here. At any rate, he's fallen so low, I doubt he'll ever get up. <laughs> Sad, really. Um, is this actually anything new? I'd like to ask you about Tavinta. Popular topic. Anything <laughs> specific? Oh, this is, this is a new option. Thanks to one of my perks, I guess. Corypheus is a figure out of Tavinta history. He was a magister. Yes, but that was a different time. The Imperium's power was at its peak then. The Civil War had ended, the Magisterium was united, its armies scooping up bits of Thedas like candy. The Magisters who entered the Black City. It was a demonstration of how exceptional Tevinter had become. But who were they? <laughs> no one knows. There's no record of a Magister named Corypheus. All this happened 1400 years ago, before the Blight nearly wiped us out. There are no records. Today, people half believe it's all just a story. And that's what I believed. But I guess it's not just a story. We have evidence the story is very much real. But not who Corypheus is. If he even remembers. There used to be families who claimed some of those magisters as their own. That stopped when the Chantry appeared. Then it was shameful, and the families distanced themselves from the tale. All we know is that some men and women entered the Black City looking for the old gods. What did they find? <laughs> According to Corypheus, nothing. And only he could tell us more. All right, that's it then. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. <laughs> right, that's enough. I should go. As you wish. Um, let's see if there's anything else that he has to say. Questions, questions. No, apparently not. Also, it is, it is kind of dark in this place, but yet his convoluted i don't even know what this is it's so bright I <laughs> it should looks kind of strange as you wish <laughs> okay um we finished dorian and yeah let's oh that's a new quest let's try to get to vivienne somehow um where exactly is she she's somewhere over there so maybe oh yeah that's that's her that's her also, are these are these the mother eggs that I'm finding? I could be. I'm only needing three more for this. Interesting. Anyway, let's let's go and speak to Vivienne. Yes, my dear. Right. Um. Uh. Yeah. I already asked her about herself, but I think this is actually new. How can you possibly oppose freedom for your own people? You live in the world, Inquisitor. You have <laughs> eyes and ears. The obvious cannot have completely escaped you. The world is not made up of mages and templars or circles and chantries. There is no us and no them. I actually there agree to that. People. people who must share a world which is not portioned equally among all. My own people want a larger share of the world, uncaring that they have already been granted great power. 
Well, they didn't ask for the power. That's not their fault. They can't help what they are. Wolves cannot live peacefully among sheep, <laughs> no matter how much they regret being wolves. The wolves howl and claw at the fences that hold them back. Take pity and you let them loose among the lambs. And what do the sheep do? Panic. And the <laughs> scent of their fear drives the wolves to attack. Um, that that is not a very good analogy because wolves are animals, they act on instinct. And mages are humans, they have a choice. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, plus she is kind of contradicting what she just said a moment before. Be and before that she just said, you know, it's not about us versus them. It's not about mages and Templars and non-mages or whatever. So basically she said that you should look past that sort of group thinking. But then she goes back to the same sort of group thinking by separating them into wolves and lambs. Which is basically the same thing again, you know, us and them. So... She, she isn't really following through her own argument here. And yeah, comparing humans to animals uh, is, is kind of a stretch indeed. You're taking the analogy a little far, don't you think? No, the example doesn't do the situation justice. Every <laughs> creature knows a wolf. How do you recognize a mage? I care for the witch hunts that will come. I care for the angry mobs who string up mages on gibbets for the vultures. I care that my stupid brethren will kill and be killed by frightened people defending their families from monsters. <laughs> I will stand in opposition to that, whatever you may do. <laughs> All right, but again, that's not a very good argument, because if there are witch hunts, you would assume that the best course of action is to sanction, you know, the people that are uh, starting the witch hunts or, you know, that are hunting the witches and, and not the ones that are being hunted because that's normally what you do in you know a civilized society but yeah that, that was pretty quick she didn't really have that much to say so let's pick up pick up this piece of information and right um liliana she was somewhere up here i believe yep here she is so, let's talk, my dear. At your service, my lady. Um, yeah, you must miss Justinia. The Divine's death hit you hard. How have you been feeling? Oh, you are referring to my outburst in the Haven. <laughs> I... I am much better now. Justinia was such a dear friend and... There were so many things going wrong. Um... <laughs> does anything ever go right? Yeah, you can tell me about it if, if you like to. Sometimes it's best to talk these things out. I was there when the hero of Ferelden defeated the Archdemon. <laughs> we won the day, and I thought the Maker smiled on me. When the Divine requested my help, I went to her. I owed her that much. I sacrificed so much to do the Maker's work. But now Justinia is dead. I was angry. I felt betrayed. But I shouldn't have let my emotions get the better of me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, not for that. Don't apologize. You were grieving and upset. I understand. Thank you. Now, enough of this. Let us think more pleasant thoughts. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think this is still the other inappropriate question that I don't really want to ask. Maybe I will just take it to get rid of it because it kind of annoys me that it's still still keeps in still stays in my dialogue wheel but yeah any updates anything i should know it seems that the olesian army is awaiting our next move some of the generals are sympathetic to our cause others are still suspicious our actions are under a great deal of scrutiny uh all right any other updates anything i should know i've agents stationed by the ruins of haven should corypheus or his lackeys return so far nothing and the breach has been quiet for some time. That is something, at least. And even more updates, maybe. Anything I should know? I have nothing to report at the moment. All right, carry on then. I'll leave you to your work. Right, um, so... We still want to talk to Cassandra, I guess. So, let's... Oh, wait, actually, I can... I can <coughs> just jump down here, right? Yes, I can. <laughs> so much faster. Um, 
Yeah, I think this is a good way to reach Cassandra. Here we are. There is something I wish to discuss, Inquisitor. Oh, um, right, there is this new there quest marker. There is something I wish to discuss, Inquisitor. In that case, let's talk to her now. My lady Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions, the Devinter. <laughs> what has he done? Has Dorian done something wrong? <laughs> no, thankfully. It's nothing like that. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? Um, they're not on good terms as far as I know. He's mentioned his family. They don't appear to be on good terms. Yes. I believe you're correct. The family sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting <laughs> quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped... Well, let's investigate. What kind of meeting is this? Just what kind of meeting do they have in mind? I believe they just want to talk, to understand why Dorian felt he had to come here. <laughs> Somewhere private, away from Skyhold, but not in Tevinter. You make them nervous, I think. They don't understand why he's here with the Inquisition. They want him to come home. <laughs> so you're saying they're just worried parents? I'd be worried too if my son ran off to join some gauche foreigners on a crusade. <laughs> so would I. Although I suspect there's more to it than either of us understands. Probably. So why would they contact you? Why would his family contact you? Because they don't know you, Inquisitor. I am not of the Imperial Chantry, but they know what I represent. These are parents concerned about the welfare of their son. How could I not do whatever possible? I would speak to the young man myself, but he <laughs> does not care for me. Thus I come to you. If any good can come of this, we must try. So they don't want to tell him about this? They don't want Dorian to know? That seems odd. They believe the young man would refuse. And the letter implies he'd have cause. Yet, they are remorseful for whatever came before. This is a chance for dialogue. There is deceit in bringing the young man to this meeting without his foreknowledge, I know. <laughs> but does it not lead to a greater kindness if there is potential for reconciliation? And this is legit leg legitimate. Are you sure this isn't some kind of trap? I mean, the secrecy. That did occur to me. What if it is a plot of those mages, the Venatori? Another reason to put this in your hands, Inquisitor. I pray that isn't the case. But if it is, you are far better equipped than I to respond to such treachery. Um, yeah, I, I don't really feel good doing this behind his back. If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family... Oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send a retainer? to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern, to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. Hmm. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. It behooves us? Official looking letter, your reverence. I understand that you feel inadequate to the task of bringing Dorian to a secret meeting. Even in the asking, I find it difficult to believe myself. Considering my son has rebuffed all contact, this is the only way. I know him. He would be too proud to come if he knew, even just to talk. That is all we wish to do. The thought of Dorian in the south placing himself in the path of such danger alarms us more than I can express. If this somehow succeeds, we have a family retainer at the Vandral Hills watching for Dorian's arrival. He will bring the boy to us somewhere private. If Dorian utterly refuses to go with him, it ends there. And there's nothing we can do. We are at our wits end. Graciously, yours, Magister Hallward of House Pavis. <laughs> it's kind of funny that he talks about Dorian as, you know, the boy. It's not like he's a little child, you know. So, yeah. I don't know how I feel about this. Did I actually get a quest from that? 
I did. Mother Giselle passed along the letter written by Dorian's father. Dorian may wish to read it, but it may be best just to take him to the tavern to sort this out in person. Optional. Speak to Dorian about the letter. Bring Dorian to the Garden Lantern. Yeah, I think I would like to talk to him about it first. Because I don't know how I feel about this. Um, by the way, speaking of Dorian... Um, yeah, I have I have been flirting quite a bit with him. However, um, I have I have certain suspicions about him. Let's put it like that. And if my suspicions are right, then um, that's probably not going to happen. I really I really like um, the flirting between them, though, because it's very playful. You know, it's almost like a game back and forth. You know, a game that both sides enjoy but neither of them is really serious about it that's kind of how it feels but yeah um i i have i have a suspicion that this may not work out how do you know they went <laughs> one way or the other stefan finally died it was a blessing really he's been in so much pain since haven he was out of his mind at the end he smiled he said <laughs> he smelled his mother's turnip stew slipped away. Ah, uh, this is about the turnips that coal burned. Anyway, uh, I think Cassandra should be the last one and then we have finally caught up with all our companions. So let's speak to her, but first maybe pick up this codex entry and now we can talk to her. I can keep staring at this, but I won't get any closer. <laughs> well, maybe I can help. Something I can help you with? Yes. Possibly. We saw so many Red Templars at the assault on Haven. Perhaps all that was left of the Order. What we didn't see was Lord Seeker Lucius. Indeed, I've seen no hint of any Seekers amongst the Red Templars, or anywhere. I have a growing suspicion Corypheus has imprisoned them. Uh, couldn't they be dead? Why imprisoned? He could just as easily have killed them. Not easily. <laughs> but yes, they may be dead. But the Seekers began this war against the mages. They cannot have simply vanished. There must be a trail we can follow. Yet so far I have only discovered hints. Yeah, right. What if they're infected with Red Lyrium as well? But they could have ended up just like the Red Templars. Seekers do not use Lyrium. Right. I assume Corypheus gained control of the Templars by corrupting the Lyrium they were already taking. To do the same to a Seeker, you'd have to force the Lyrium upon him. That may be what happened, but it couldn't have begun that way. We're missing a piece of the puzzle, Inquisitor. I need to find it. Well, this is clearly important to you. Finding them obviously means a lot to you. I left the Order. But I can never abandon them. I cannot even claim that rescuing them would be beneficial. They wouldn't look kindly on the Inquisition. But even so, if there's a chance... If we can spare resources to follow up on these leads, Inquisitor, I would appreciate it. All right, I'm sure, I'm sure we can do something about that. Oh, and, and suddenly I'm over here again. And I got, <laughs> I got a new mission. Um... I think that actually Liliana has already returned, so maybe we can center on this mis mission already. Let's have a look at that. Alright, so what exactly did Liliana write? Escape routes for ages in Crestwood. The tunnels are complete and our agents slip in and out of Care Bronach like shadows. The workmen who were digging out the caves discovered some old dwarven items there as well. Mundane things such as pots and furniture, but they brought a fair price among some collectors. Alright. Very nice. Um, uh, Alright, we have this mission too. Locate missing seekers. Yeah, this, this is the one. The attack on Haven showed that Corypheus corrupted and controlled the Templar Order. This should have been impossible under the watch of her fellow Seekers, but they, and particularly Lord Seeker Lucius, are nowhere to be found. Have they vanished, or, as Cassandra believes, was something done to them? With effort, the truth may come to light. Liliana. 
Someone must have seen these seekers are giving them safe harbor. Entice them with a reward and leads will follow. The seekers have many secret hideaways, according to Cassandra. These would be the first places agents should search. Yeah, Liliana's solution sounds fine to me and she's faster, so... Inquisitor. Let's give it to her and we're done here. And yeah, I think we can finally call this an episode and we should have talked to everyone now. So I think we can move on to different things in the next episode. And after, you know, three episodes of Skyhold stuff, I think some explorations are in order. Um, yeah, I think I actually want to go back to the Storm Coast because this still needs to be finished. And I mean, there is some Grey Warden stuff going on here. And it might not be a bad idea to finish this before we continue with the Grey Warden storyline. I mean, th this, this doesn't seem to be a big place, so I hope that we can finish it in, you know, less than an episode if I edit it accordingly. And then, uh, afterwards, we will um, continue with this Meet Hawk and Stout in the Western Approach. Alright, so yeah, it's it's an episode, alright, and uh, see you in the next one. Bye-bye.